chapter 7.2, day one, we're graphing rational functions. So a rational function has a form f of x equals p of x over q of x, where p of x and q of x are polynomials. And of course, q of x cannot be zero. The inverse variation function that we looked at in, in the previous lesson, a over x, is a rational function. The graph of the parent function f of x equals 1 over x is a hyperbola, and that consists of two symmetrical parts, here and here, and they're called branches. The domain and range are all non-zero real numbers. So domain is all real numbers except x cannot be zero, it's a vertical line, vertical asymptote, and y also cannot be zero here, the horizontal asymptote. Any function of the form g of x equals a over x has the same asymptotes, here, the x and y axis here, domain and range as a function f of x equals 1 over x. So we're going to start graphing those type of functions. We're going to graph g of x equals 4 over x. Compare the graph with the graph of f of x equals 1 over x. So first we need to look at, is it of the form g of x equals a over x? So notice there's no other numbers underneath, there's no other numbers adding or subtracting to it, so yes, it is of this form. So because of that, we can draw the asymptotes immediately. So our asymptotes are the x-axis and the y-axis. Now taking a look at it, just look at the function 4 over x. We cannot plug in a 0, right? 0 is not allowed, and so therefore that is a restriction for us. So we can draw that vertical line. x cannot be 0. And then we just know that it's also y cannot also equal 0 here. So. Uh, then we make a table of values. So we're going to start with doing a table of values, but there is a shorter way to do it. Now notice I have numbers here already, and so notice that zero is missing. We cannot have zero, so that's in the middle. That reminds us of that. And we always want to choose values to the right and to the left of that. So in this case, we're going to pick one, two, and three. And so, and actually not three, we're going to go ahead and pick four. So we're going to pick nicer numbers here. So looking at this, we have, if we plug in one, so look at it, if we have four over one here, Okay, 4 over x, so if we plug in 1 here, 4 over 1 is just 4. Then 4 over 2, that's going to be 2. Then 4 over 4, that's going to be 1. On the left side, if we plug in negative 1, so 4 over negative 1, that's just negative 4. 4 over negative 2, that is negative 2. Then 4 over negative 4, that's just negative 1. So notice the numbers are similar, they're just opposite signs. So let's graph it. So when you plug in 1 for x, you get 4 for y. We plug in 2, we get 2. And at 4, we get 1. And so then those branches approach those asymptotes but do not touch them. So notice they always go away from it, and it always makes that type of curve. So it should never go in, uh, for example. Um, it should never go in this way. Okay, it should never go that way. It always goes this way. So the other one will always be opposite on the other side, so it should never be next to each other. So notice, if we plug in negative 1, we get negative 4. If we plug in negative 2, we get negative 2. And then at negative 4, we get negative 1. And so here is the graph. And so there are our two branches. So let's graph the parent function 1 over x. And so 1 over x, so let's just plug in numbers. We can do this in our head. If we plug in 1, x is 1, we get 1 over 1, so we get 1. Now if we plug in 2, 1 over 2, that's just a half. Now just to show you, if you plug in a half, because I want to go to the left of that one, 1 half. So remember, when you're dividing by a fraction, you multiply by the reciprocal. So the answer is 2. So when x is a half, y is 2. And so notice it is here. On the other side, it's going to be similar, so it's just going to be negative values. So we have 1, we plug in negative 1, so uh, 1, negative 1, so it's here. We plug in one, a negative 2, we get negative 1 half. And we plug in a negative 1 half, that's going to be 1 times negative 2, so that'll be negative 2. So there is the parent function in green here. So the graph of G, the purple one, lies farther from the axis than the graph of F, which is our green one. Both graphs lie in the first and third quadrant, so notice that. They're both in the first and third quadrant here, first quadrant, third quadrant. And they also have the same asymptotes and domain and range. So we can see that our purple graph is a vertical stretch by 4, the number on top. So try out this example here, graphing a rational function um, of the uh, of negative 6 here. 
Uh, so notice in the middle, we cannot have zero, so our asymptotes are still at the x and y axis. So try this out. So you notice our asymptotes are still here at the x and y axis. So when you plug in, so plug in 1, negative 6 over 1, that's going to be negative 6. If we plug in 2, we get negative 3. And then we plug in 3, we get negative 2. I'm going to plug in one more. Let's plug in 6. 6 over 6, that's a negative 1. Now on the other side, so we have negative 6 over negative 1, we get a positive 6. Negative 6 over negative 2, we get a positive 3. And then negative 6 over negative 3, that's going to be a positive 2. And then if we plug in 6, just to put one more, negative 6, negative 6 over negative 6, that's going to be a positive 1. So you'll see why, I'm hoping you see why I chose that number, and that's actually going to help us with graphing these. You don't normally have to do a table once you uh, see the patterns of these. So let's graph these points. So at 1, 1, we're at negative 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Then at 2, we're at negative 3. At 3, we're at negative 2. And at 6, we're at 1. And so here is the graph. Here's one branch. Okay, so it's reflected. So notice there's a negative 6, so therefore it should be reflected, uh, as opposed to our parent function here, where it's on the quadrant 1, quadrant 3. We're going to end up being in quadrant 2 and quadrant 4 on the opposite sides. So let's graph the other points that we have here. So I hope you see that it's going to be on the other side. So at 1, negative 1, we're at positive 6. At negative 2, we're at positive 3. At negative 3, we're at positive 2. And at negative 6, we're at positive 1. Okay, so notice that these graphs are never next to each other, so I should never see them where they're right next to each other, 1 and 2 here. They're always in opposite uh, quadrants here always and uh, the, the points are very similar okay so there is uh, this is the graph negative 6 over X